On this episode, we'll be talking about how to build an effective Tau Empire army without breaking the bank at the same time. Thousand points or bust. The Tau Empire, the youngest empire in the 41st millennium, has been bringing their brand of peace and justice to their arm of the galaxy under the banner of the greater good. Not particularly physically strong, the Tau are known primarily for their supreme command of technology and overwhelming firepower. Eternally optimistic, the Tau will only try full-scale warfare as a last resort, but when they do, the results are brutal. This particular video won't be covering tactics or recommending which sept to play, but we will be building a battalion list that'll help you get used to the way that the Tau Empire plays. Of course, you'll need the Tau Empire Codex and Warhammer 40,000 rulebook to play the game, available at the link down below. So the Tau Empire has fairly cheap units, which is great until you realize that you're making a show called 1,000 Points or Bust, and you're trying not to make the most expensive army in the universe. So, let's get started. So we start off with the start collecting box because that's easy enough. You're going to need pretty much everything that comes out of this box to make the most out of your army. The Ethereal has a number of different ways to buff your troops. The Fire Warriors are going to want to stand basically in front of him with their pulse rifles and do their thing. Now I've kitted these out with pulse pistols also because I've found very effective moments uh, when I've gotten charged after Overwatch and then it suddenly turns to my turn, I'm just pull out pulse pistols and go bap, 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 bap. Um, but usually if you get charged with Tau, you're not going to last too terribly long. But uh, you cut this out with the missile pods, you give them all sorts of drones. Uh, the understanding with Tau Empire models in general is that you will have drones to back them up. Period. End of story. Don't play them without them because it's dangerous. And I'll go into why in a little bit. But you're going to need three squads of fire warriors. I've come up with the two strike team, one breacher team rule. So the fire warriors stand out in front and the Breacher team run interference for somebody else who might charge in. But you can always just run them as three strike teams, uh, all with pulse rifles and marker lights on the Shazwis. But that's me. Now one of the reasons that you want a big blob of fire warriors is to make the most of the Katra Fireblade. Now he's going to give all your boys an extra shot at half range which means you're shooting three times instead of two at 15 inches. Now, yeah, sure, it's in charge range, but let's face it, anybody who knows how to play this game is going to charge your Tau, because that's where they're extremely weak. Now they're extremely strong in the shooting department. So, you know, put two and two together. So the final thing that comes in the star collecting box is three regular crisis battle suits. Now you can kit them out as bodyguards if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it because their ballistic skill is kind of flimsy either way. But if you drop these guys in with, say, a bunch of fusion blasters behind enemy tanks, well, you won't get the uh, half range for Melta weapons, but you'll be able to burn through them pretty easily with six Melta shots. That being said, to make them survive that to that second turn, I've given them shield generators as well. Now, you may want to kit your guys out with any number of other different things. I know a lot of people swear by cyclic ion blasters as their sort of pitch the towel out and, you know, hope for the best. And I can't deny how effective it is, though, if I was going to put battle suits in an army, I would try and make them last a little bit longer, but what do I know? Uh, the other thing that we want to be using is, ha, Unistel suits. Didn't see them there, did you? Um, they're pretty effective at burning down tanks as well, and the burst cannons that they carry 
are effective against pretty much everything short of a land raider. Especially if you throw the advanced targeting systems on it and boost their AP by a little bit. One of the other things we're going to bring to the table is going to be our Pathfinders. Now they're the ones that are going to marker light everything on the battlefield for you. And also I've kitted them out with two rail rifles just to give them that little extra punch. Now, marker lights are pretty much the most important thing in your Tau army because they're going to be giving you rerolls to hit, they're going to be giving you better ballistic skill if you get enough on them, you're going to need them if you want to focus fire on anything. But the problem is that the things that have them are usually either marker drones or pathfinders, neither of which are particularly survivable. And the final piece of our puzzle here is the broadside battle suit, which I have elected to kit out in this case with smart missiles, seeker missiles, a shield generator, and two high yield missile pods. These will give you the most amount of shots possible for your money, and while the rail rifle is cool, it's just not quite what it used to be in 7th edition and editions prior. You could do a whole heck of a lot worse than a whole lot of missiles flying at something. A well-balanced Tau army should have plenty of line troopers to hose down incoming forces with pulse rifle fire, and then should be looking to put fire where it's most effective. You're going to be wanting to use all of the ethereal's abilities to give yourselves rerolls or feel no pain rolls. Every piece of the Tau list has a place where it is best suited to put fire, and you as a Tau commander are tasked with applying that firepower against its proper target. Battlesuit and strike team balance is key here. This list is by no means exhaustive, but it should give you an idea of just what a Tau Empire should look like when you're starting out. And if you go to the Fantasy Games website and check out our 1000 points or bus subcategory, you can get everything you see here. Once you get your head around the Tau, you can come on back down, pick up your paints and supplements and data cards and everything else that really get your game on. You can always get a Rail Rifle Broadside, or a Riptide Battlesuit, or a Storm Surge, or a Hammerhead. And whatever you decide on, it's all here at Fantasy Games. Thanks for watching.